Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Charles Sabans. I want to welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show. We cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment. We we'll give you guys a first perspective on things and how we see them. And today, we got a hell of a show for you guys. But before we get into it, uh, please make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. And be sure to hit all notifications to be notified the second we publish our content. Let me go ahead and get into this uh, topic uh, here. So, uh, yesterday, something interesting happened on first things first now as you guys on the panel of nick wright kevin wiles and chris broussard have a very very entertaining show and if you know anything about that show you will know that nick wright is the resident lebron james fanatic and chris broussard is a resident lebron james fan right there's a there's a fundamental difference and kevin wiles i think is a jordan guy but uh he seldom gives his viewpoint on some of these issues now what has been one of the key storylines about LeBron James throughout his NBA career? It's always been LeBron needs help. He needs help. He needs help. He never has help. It's something that they do in the media all day long. It's one of the reasons why they're always talking about, at least for the last three years, who the Lakers need. Who can they go out and get? Can they get this player? Can they get that player? That always seems to be uh, the, to the talking point uh, from these guys. He needs help. And then the other thing is, and we've all complained about this, which is it's never LeBron's fault. It's always somebody else's fault. It's the coach's fault. It's his teammates fault. It's, it's the organization's fault. It's always someone else. And people have been able to make excuses for him throughout his entire career as to why he can't win. For example, LeBron is the only player that some people in the media try to actually not hold losing against him. The first time he got swept in the final, oh, he was a pup. The second time, oh, it was Dwayne Wade. The other time, oh, he was just outmatched. It's like, well, so what? you guys have an excuse for every single time the guy loses. But then with other people, uh, you don't give them that same leeway. So this is always, this is what, if you follow basketball for the last 10, uh, 15 years, you know that this has always been the talking point. And it's something that you seldom see LeBron fans bring up. They just totally ignore it, the way they ignore losing. But yesterday... It seemed like it, se it seemed like uh, Chris Broussard finally reached his breaking point. Yesterday, they were discussing the Los Angeles Lakers dropping that game against the Golden State Warriors. And during Nick Wright's uh, monologue, he then, as always, took it upon himself to now start blaming Dar Darvin Ham. And to be fair, there are a lot of clown ass creators that they always do that. Whenever the Lakers win, they either give credit to uh, what is it to um, <clears throat> LeBron or AD? They sometimes give it to Austin Reeves. And then usually when they lose, Darvin Ham, Darvin Ham, Darvin Ham, Darv you can just go look at their videos. That's their whole analysis. And they never put it on the players. And if they do, the player that they most likely blame is AD and they almost never blame LeBron James. Never, never. I see them. I see them. But it seemed like yesterday... Chris Broussard actually reached his breaking point uh, with Nick Wright, and he absolutely went ballistic on him when Nick tried to use this thing of, oh, it's not LeBron's fault, it's the coach's fault. He absolutely went off on him, and I absolutely enjoyed it, and that's what we really want to focus on. But before we even get to this back and forth that they had on television yesterday, this video is brought to you by our brand new sponsor, Price Picks, which is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. Prize picks is really simple. Instead of just selecting a team, you just select two or more players, pick more or less their projected stats, and then you place your entry. For example, this week, I'm selecting two entries, Stephen Curry for more than 25 points, and then I got Anthony Davis for more than two blocks, and Damian Lillard for more for more than four three-pointers made. Price Picks is also the only daily sports platform with an injury insurance policy. So, for example, if you have a player who gets injured in the first half and doesn't return to the second half, that player gets automatically rebooted. What I also love about Price Picks is that it offers weekly promotions like Taco Tuesdays. Each Tuesday, Price Picks discounts select player projections up to 25% to provide even more value. So go to pricepicks.com slash CLNS and use code CLNS for a first deposit match of up to $100. That's go to pricepick.com slash CLNS, use code CLNS for a first deposit match to, of up to $100. And once again, once you support this sponsor, you're supporting this channel. 
Thank you. So what we want to do is want to play this exchange for you now, and then we'll come back and really react to it and give you guys our thoughts on it. Take a listen to this exchange here. Since the 73 win season, you should be able to chalk it up to that. But the reason I can't and the reason I was angry tweeting, which I promised America I was going to try to do less of, the reason is because despite all of it, the Lakers had a chance in this game. And then Darvin Ham rolled out. For the first time, I, bro, I knew you were, hold on. This is going to make me mad. Darvin he rolled, well, well, let Darvin me ask, hold on, wait. I, here's the thing on this. Let me show you the lineup, and then let me ask you whose fault it is. Because let me show you the lineup that he rolled out there. These five guys who had played going into the end of the third quarter last night. Let me check watch. Zero minutes together, and you know why? Because that's an absurd, it's, 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 it's D'Lo, a worse version of D'Lo and Dinwiddie, a worse version of Din Dinwiddie and Gabe Vinton, and then Torrey and Prince and Jackson Hayes. That, that lineup, and they let go of the rope, and the game's over. The game was over in three minutes. And he, I know you think I'm too hard on Darvin Ham, but here's my question to you, bro. AD's been excellent and healthy. LeBron's been excellent and healthy. You like the roster. I don't, yeah, but you like do. Okay. So why aren't they better I don't other think than LeBron's the coaches? playing as well as his numbers suggest. Okay. The, the, he doesn't impact the game. He was great last night. Yeah. He couldn't impact the game. Yeah. We saw it against Denver. Great. So yeah. couldn't well, impact the game. Mad at, so you do so you agree with Wilds then? That, or, no, I'm not saying he's the problem. I mean Wilds says say, he's the problem. Well, I, so I'm not saying that. I'm saying just saying the numbers way. are giving you the impression. Because if you got a guy put up the the numbers say he's as good as ever. No, I know he's not that. Nobody's saying that. But do you think And he doesn't dominate games okay, anymore? No, okay. Not not regularly. I get that, which is why they're not a champion contender. But that's not the problem here. My question is this. The Lakers have is Anthony I'm just saying with LeBron and I, you know how much I love LeBron. No. But I'm tired of every time his team doesn't win a championship or doesn't get close, it's somebody else's no, fault. But hold on a second. It's always the coach's fault or the teammate's fault. That, it's not. But right. So I He's not to blame, but I'm just saying they're not as good as as people think. Hold on. But wait, but so this is this is the 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 discrepancy here. I agree with you that LeBron is not able to carry a team, obviously, to championship contention by himself. Mm -hmm. Nobody. Well, he ain't even being asked to the, do it by himself. He's the, got Anthony Davis. Okay, even, so but here's my question. If we will just go as conservative as possible, Anthony Davis is one of the 15 best players in the league, and LeBron's one of the 20 best players in the league. Okay, be as conservative as possible, meaning That's very conservative, that very conservative yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So why? So if I just say LeBron's the 18th best player in the league, I think he's probably closer to eighth. Call him 18th. Why is the team not better? If you have it's on the players, man. I'm. So, I mean, again, I, and I'm not trying to defend Darvin Ham. I'm just saying, if it's not Darvin Ham, it's Luke Walton, it's Frank Vogel, who has a championship, by the way. Play the game. All right, just go out there. And play. I mean, we can look at any coach. Steve Kerr, was it his fault? Was he all of a sudden a bad coach when the Warriors were struggling? Some people were throwing out Steve Kerr like, oh, he ain't doing a good job. No, it's. I'm just saying. No, but Steve Kerr has a resume of a good job. What? I guess here's my thing. What evidence do we have Darvin Ham's a well, good Well, last year they got to the Western Conference Finals. And, above, above, and nobody expected him to. And you thought How about was, that? So, so you think so? I'm not saying he was working magic, but I think he did a fine job. Okay. So you heard the exchange there. If you listen to Chris Broussard speak, you could tell that he was beginning to get aggravated with this talking point. Here's what's interesting. I regularly listen or watch The Odd Couple <clears throat> on, on Fox Sports Radio. And I have heard Chris Broussard bring up this point to Rob Parker on many different occasions. And I've always asked myself, I said, but why doesn't he bring this up on TV? Why doesn't he bring it up on TV? Because I believe it's a pertinent point to highlight when you're on television. So to yesterday, for him to get to the point where he was like, no, I have to say this, you know that Nick Wright was irking him. But this is what they do. This is what they do. Let me encapsulate this entire situation for you guys. Do you know that coming into this season, most folks thought the Lakers were going to be good, including myself? Most people thought this. They thought that the Lakers were going to be at least, or at best, a top four seed in the Western Conference. I don't think anyone predicted, based on the run that they went, that they went on last year, that the Lakers would be... Let me look at the NBA standings right now. The Lakers would be 
the ninth seed in the Western Conference and they find themselves fighting in the playing tournament against Golden State. And that's the team that they will most likely face on April 18th, whenever the whenever we find out who's playing who. I don't think any of these guys would have predicted that. But given the fact that that's what's occurred, they now have to find some other reason, apart from blaming the players, the star players, for why this team is underperforming. Now, why is the Laker not li- the Lakers not living up to expectations? It could be, it just could be that the Lakers had an IPO this summer, and some people bought into the hype, including myself, and you went out there and bought the shares at hundred dollars when they were really worth thirty. Because essentially that's what's happening. We thought we were getting something good. After we got the product, we found out it really wasn't that good and people started selling off. And then you realize that the real market value of the Lakers is actually $30. What am I talking about? People figured out that, wait a minute, we thought this team would be better than they actually were, but now we're realizing they're not. Now, some people say, but how do you know that? You can look at the record. If you look at the Western Conference, the only plausible explanation that I could come up with is for the Lakers being a ninth seed is that all the other teams are just better. Now, some people have said, but they beat in certain teams. They beat in this team three times, four times, five. I understand that. But the record shows what it shows. That's why Kobe always said, uh, you are who your record says you are. Right now, it is, it, 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 it is unclear to me if one could say that the Lakers are on the level of the Nuggets, the Timberwolves, the Thunder, the Clippers, and the Mavericks. I'm not exactly sure how we could come out here and say that. They're just not. It just seems to me that the only answer here is that those teams are just better. And maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's not coaching. Maybe it's not this. Maybe it's not that. It's just that they're playing in a tougher conference. Welcome to the West. Welcome to the West, LeBron. This is what it's like every single year. I remember there were years where Kobe, for you to make it to Kobe, the Lakers had the number one seed, and I think the eighth seed had a they had they they won fifty games. That was the Oklahoma City Thunder. Welcome to the Wild Wild West. So if you're the ninth or the tenth, you missed the playoffs. Welcome to the real competition. This is a standardized season, and you're seeing it for what it is. These are my thoughts. Whatever you guys think, leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section. Also, if you disagree with the show, you're a different creator. Please feel free to create more content on us. Don't forget to put Dreamers Pro in the title so you keep our name popping. We catch you on the next one. Peace.